by Go Loud or wherever you get your podcasts. On 106 to 108 FM. On the News Talk app, powered by Go Loud and Smart Speaker. This, this is News Talk. It's two o'clock. Good afternoon. The President has issued a strongly worded warning about deviating from Ireland's traditional policy on neutrality. Michael D. Higgins says the country is playing with fire during a dangerous period of drift in foreign policy and should avoid burying itself in other people's agendas. His comments in today's Business Post come ahead of a government forum on international security, which meets next week in Cork, Galway and in Dublin. Socialist Party TD for Cork North Central, McBarry, believes the majority of Irish people will back the President. My opinion is that Michael D. Higgins has nailed it. I mean, <laughs> he says that the Irish government are playing with fire. I think that's correct. And he says that um, Michal Martin's security forum, which kicks off in Cork on Thursday, is stacked. And I think that's very true as well. So any attempt to silence the president on these issues in the next couple of days will cause a big crisis for the government. The government remains split over whether to allow Garthi to use facial recognition technology. Body cams are due to be rolled out later this year with proposals for the cameras to be installed with FRT. Justice Minister Helen McEntee is among those in favour of the move, but some Green Party TDs have concerns around the impact on civil liberties. Minister McEntee says she won't comment further while discussions are ongoing. I think we're all very much of the view that we need to make sure Gardaí have body cameras, that they're rolled out as quickly as possible. And I am very clearly on the record as saying I think that in gathering all of the information through body cameras that we should have facial recognition that the Gardaí can access this information as quickly as possible but I am still working that through with colleagues. A status yellow thunderstorm warning is in place today for most of the country as heavy downpours look likely to continue. All counties in Munster and Connacht have been issued with the warning by Met Aaron, including eight other counties. Localised flooding and difficult travelling conditions may occur as a result. The weather alert is in place until 10 o'clock tonight. News talk weather. Thanks to Ryanair. Watch the Tour de France live in July with Ryanair's low fare flights to Bordeaux, Paris or Toulouse. Today will be cloudy with heavy showers with the potential for thunderstorms and localised flooding. Highest temperatures of 18 to 22 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This is News Talk. And you're welcome back to Off the Ball here on News Talk. John Duggan, Tinian, for Joe Malloy on your Sunday until six. What about this? Kildare won four, Ross Common two points in the football round robin. Let's go to the other game uh, in that group uh, Dublin against Sligo, Breffney Park. What's the latest? Neil Ewing. Yeah, John, 17 minutes gone. Uh, Sligo, three points to two up. And to be honest, they've been the better team so far. Just. Had a turnover for Sligo as it came, broke forward there on the halfway line. Uh, but Dublin turned it over again. Uh, Sligo back in possession. Uh, Dublin have been very, very sloppy. Right. Okay. And um, what's the, uh, the kind of the feeling over the, the last 10 minutes? Again, who's been putting in good performances in the early doors? Uh, yeah, I think um, Sean Carbine for Sligo uh, kicked uh, an outrageous score from the sideline. Uh, Sligo just went up, actually hit the post uh, with, a, with a point attempt there. Uh, so it's, it's broken for Stephen Cluxton to, to pick it up. Um, yeah, Sean Carbine kicked a great score for Sligo, really lifted the Sligo crowd uh, out on the right-hand touchline, swung it over, uh, inspirational point. Um, I guess it's uh, it's probably been more a reflection of how Dublin have played. They've just been very sloppy. Hand passes going to ground. Kind of in for a goal chance. Dublin. Yeah, uh, Dublin uh, pam a goal into the net there. Just as I spoke, they delivered a long ball in from about halfway. Uh, right footed pass, right across the uh, crossfield ball, uh, gathered inside by Dublin, and they just had the overlap then. Conor Callan had broken away from his man to pam it into the net. So, you know, that is a game changing score. I guess Sligo's good start probably has been helped, it has to be said, by playing with what looks to be a reasonable bit of a breeze. It's the sort of a breeze, I think, maybe not an issue to play into, but an issue to shoot into. You know, when you hang the ball up there just to get that bit of height on it. And then Dublin, that's where we reflected in a few uh, wides from Dublin, even Paddy Small missed a free, probably cl- very close to the edge of the D that, you know, everybody would have had him chalked down for. But yeah, that was the kind of sloppiness that we've seen from Dublin. Uh, probably a moment to look out for in the Sunday game later on uh, is a, a point attempt by Lee Gannon. Everybody was a little unsure. Uh, was it over? Was it not? But I don't think anybody was unsure as the poor umpire who had to signal it wide. 
and like, he can only have uh, signaled it in a way it's kind of okay. half signaled it wide um, so um, yeah Dublin very sloppy Sligo patient with the ball using that wind when they can to get some crossfield balls in they'll be disappointed themselves they drop two two shots short but a very encouraging start OK so uh, Dublin 1-2 Sligo 3 points there at Breffney Park uh, Dublin taking the lead uh, Kildare 1-4 Roscommon 2 points we'll keep you right up to speed on everything that's going on in the All-Ireland Round Robin as it draws to a close time now though over the next hour and a half for the Sunday pay-per-view we're delighted to have in studio the Irish Boxing Correspondent of the Sun Kevin Byrne and the co-Ramblers boss Shane Keegan Kevin and Shane how are you both? All good John yourself? Happy Sunday Happy Father's Day Yes, yes. Yeah, Thanks for having us John and uh, great to see you we'll go through the back pages first for anybody who's watching on the digital and social channels on Off The Ball YouTube, Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, so got the Sunday Times here. Uh, keep on running. How good can Re- Ireland's Rashida Adeleke become? Second best, Donegal beat Mana to claim runner-up spot in Group 4 and home advantage in preliminary quarter-final. Kenny, I didn't get the players to the level they need. The fallout from Ireland Greece, which will be the, I suppose, the topic of conversation for the next 20, 25 minutes. The Sun Independent Sports section. Tip on fire, awfully crumbled to record defeat as Cahill's men set up a clash with Galway. They scored 7.38, which is not a time of day. It's actually a hurling score. Absolutely ridiculous, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, Kenny clinging to Rock of Gibraltar victory. Ireland manager not concerned about his own position, says Dan McDonnell. Paul Kimmage, it's Matt Bono's fault. Lance took him for a ride. And James O'Connor fault lies with Clare after last weekend's defeat to Limerick in the Munster final. We have the back of the Sunday World, a sports section. Uh, no can do. Uh, down Irish manager not concerned about his position as he says harsh reality has hit his players uh, kingdom reign on the line uh, this is about the Kerry uh, Louth game new boss will not fix Ireland says John Aldridge and Gelson Kirk into Greece and Odyssey Roy Curtis in 35 years with the uh, boys in green obviously we're at the, uh, the low web of that at the moment we have the Irish Daily Mail on Sunday decision time FAI have called to make on Kenny's future as Adderdice and Keane linked to interim role the Leeds double act Philip Quinn writes there uh, Donegal savage season Philip Lanigan Jack the lad let's enjoy Grealish's free spirit in an age of robot footballers something that Shane Keegan will obviously identify with uh, we have the Sunday Mirror Roger that I'll be back Brenda Rogers said to get the Celtic job confirmed tomorrow Kenny between rock and hard place Gibraltar game is now do or die for under fire manager Stephen and uh, City will chase 150 million riches in new elite club competition classic summer story for your football readers Graham Garrity you can guarantee Mickey Hart will have plenty of tricks up his sleeve to try and rattle the kingdom today uh, to cash for Rash so it, it appears that um, Marcus Rashford is going to become Man United's top earner on 375 grand a week which is what uh, David De Gea is and De Gea's contract expires and he's been offered a new deal on what Rashford is on 200 grand if he wants to stay put Brenda paper Brenda Rogers is said to be confirmed as the new Celtic boss tomorrow and Rock in a Hard Place uh, which is an, uh, the headline of choice in your paper uh, Kevin uh, falter against Gibraltar and Stephen is out writes Neil O'Reardon I think that's obviously the place to start Shane Keegan there's so many articles and I would call them almost beat articles and not, not really analysis articles on the 2-1 mm. defeat on Friday night and what I did notice nobody's really coming out and, and saying that this is just a blip this is this is very serious now for obviously from a sporting perspective for Stephen Kenny Yeah um, as you said there is a hell of a lot of, of, of pieces that's for sure and I suppose I don't think there's any of them really coming out swinging for Stephen if we're if we're honest and that's understandable um, I think it's just the varying degrees at which people are, are placing him under pressure um, some are, are quite measured others are going in a, a, a hell of a lot stronger on it Um yeah, I suppose if, if to start with a piece I I enjoyed if not well I probably did agree with Paul Rowan's piece to a certain extent to be honest with you I found his quite interesting he he starts John with the the opening story which I I had heard last week from from people in those circles um, so just to, to read it here very very opening paragraph Keith Andrews got quite animated during an intensive training camp in Turkey last week when some of the media watched on as Ireland went through a dead ball routine with Will Smallbone in the all-important quarterback role. The journalists were asked to look elsewhere and remain stum about Stephen Kenny's best laid plans to dismantle Greece, a request which they were happy to adhere to in the spirit of goodwill. So that, I like that as a start. It kind of sucks in straight. It gives you a little bit of a sneak behind the curtain. And as I say, I had heard... Uh, 
little bit of talk around that last week and that maybe the the journalists knew more than they were ideally supposed to know um, but we're, we're, we're kind of sticking with the, the, the line of, of keep it to yourselves kind of a thing um, yeah Paul goes on to make a few different points on it he, he talks about the the Liam Brady line um, of this being the worst group of players that any Irish manager has had to work with in how long did he say it ever or <laughs> well, in, his, in his lifetime yeah. in his lifetime um, and his take on that was that he felt it let Stephen off the hook a little bit um, he's he's he is one of the people in, in all of the articles who was definitely that bit harder um, on Stephen now he does credit I don't know if credit is the correct word to use but he does somewhat credit Stephen with at least being completely open and honest um, about things and again for for people who didn't see Stephen's comments after the game um, I saw a lot of Twitter reaction I suppose social media reaction straight after the final whistle saying wait till you hear the bull he's going to come out with now and false optimism and all that and he certainly didn't like to be fair to him John he certainly didn't um, his, his own quotes were it was a harsh reality for some of the players who played below their levels Kenny said um, that's my responsibility that's my job to get them to the levels they need tonight so we're disappointed with that it's often been the case at difficult away venues where the home team will have a lot of the ball and, ex- and exert pressure but we've got to find a way to defend better and that's probably what's killed us um, yeah he 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 didn't hide behind it he didn't try and come out with with you know he didn't really try any sort of pick me up didn't try speech. to sugarcoat it no 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 he certainly didn't um before I move on to the last bit that, that probably caught my eye on, on on Paul's piece I mean I did a summation piece myself kind of more so based around stats and, and kind of a few graphics that showed a couple of, of, of the areas that I thought we struggled in but the first point that I'd make above all else John is and this is not a hindsight statement because I had to do a, a, a podcast last week where I said it before the game like I didn't give us a hope in hell in this game I genuinely didn't give I could not wrap my head I think it was on with you last week with yeah, you were, Ward, actually. yeah well, you were you were trying to be given the realistic view <laughs> I couldn't wrap my head around how people expected even a lower ranked team win that game. lower ranked by about what three places I think yeah, 40 and, 51 I think yeah, yeah and a, a lower ranked team who are were, are definitely underway to, to going ahead of us that's for sure I'm not really fully sure how those rankings are done because as I say I, I had to do a, a preparation piece on this and what were you then not too adventurous in our team selection 100% 100% and that's the bit that is impossible to, to, to fight Stephen's corner on in that I was Positive with a Bene out, I was sure he would go for like or like like for like replacement, and by that I mean somebody who can yes get close to Evan Ferguson when we had the ball, but would absolutely have to fall in to a midfield for one of the three midfielders would shuttle across the one side. I thought that would be Knight. It ended up being Smallbone, but if you had a Knight slash Smallbone shuttling across the one side when we lost the ball, a strike partner for Ferguson who has the energy and want to drop off to the other side. Now you've got your five four one out of possession and I was sure that's the way he would go now rather than just say oh you know he made a big mess of that like I'm intrigued I don't think did any maybe I missed it did any of the journalists really push Stephen on why did he go with that selection because whatever you think of Stephen Stephen's a really deep tactical thinker okay it didn't work but he de- obviously felt it would work and had his reasons for thinking it would work. To me, I would have thought, no, I can't see how that will work. So I would love to hear, you know, Stephen talk about, well, you know, here's why we went that way. Here's what we were hoping would happen. Here's how we, we, we hoped the game would play out. Um, because as I say, he, you know, you can be sure he can give a reasoned argument as to, to why they went with that setup. But the simple fact is, and, and all the numbers show it, the improvement in the second half now granted okay how much of the improvement was was them sitting off and just defending their lead but all of the underlying numbers our possession went way up our passing accuracy went way up their XG came way way down all of the underlying too numbers though. too late though too late though and that, that's what I'm saying it is you would have to wonder as good and all as they were and I thought they were really really good and I thought they would be really really good based on what I'd seen before heading into the game because we always look at a threat on set pieces if we had gone with that kind of 4-5 more 5-4-1 shape and made it a really really tight game 
could we have managed to steal something from the game based on almost set pieces alone you would like to think that you, you possibly could have so the writing Kevin that you've uh, gone through is uh, anything that you that apart from Paul Rowan's it's, piece that there's a lot of pieces stick out if you're a struggling international manager and you it, obviously Stephen Kenny saw this as a must win game but the last time you want to be playing this must win game and it goes wrong for you is a Friday because the Sunday <laughs> this Sunday papers are absolutely chock full of stuff on them from quotes pieces with Kenny quotes pieces with Gus Poyet that are quite damning against Ireland's tactical approach to defences offered offered up by his his main his, some of his frontline players which are then kind of poo-pooed by the journalists who interpret the quotes um, yeah, like like you were saying um, John it's got, it's got a bit of everything it's got some more measured analysis pieces and then some damning ones I, I found the most damning one probably from coming from Tommy Conlon in the Sunday Independent he uh, it would be quite generally fair Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a fair it's a fair piece I wouldn't say it's it's unfair he makes lots of good points he says it was a 5-1 beating disguised as a 2-1 scoreline and I think like Shane to, to go back to your point yeah like we did wonder why it wasn't a tighter game I I can only guess that Adam Ida is the greatest tr- behind closed doors footballer ever he must have been tearing it up in training because there must have been something one thing I can't I figure I saw somebody make the point I saw I'm, I'm not sure who it was possibly on air with you yesterday was it somebody making the we, point we that, David Connolly and Gary yeah, Green David Connolly make the, was it David Connolly made the argument that maybe was it out of blind loyalty the fact that I yeah, we, turned we, up yeah, the we, last we, day we, even we, though he was injured yeah, like it was a suggestion it could have been that way um, uh, I'd be surprised feeling from David that we, you know, we needed to have a game uh, rather than a train camp um, look we're all uh, Monday morning quarterbackers when we lose At, an issue that's frustrating me with the, the Stephen Ke- Kenny reign has been the uh, obviously the inconsistency of results and it's something that Neil O'Reardon is, is good on in, in the Irish Sun um, he talks about there's 33 games for Stephen Kenny and he talks about how the first 11 games no wins in the first 11 games including an embarrassing home defeat to Luxembourg uh, and then just one loss in the next 11 suggested a, a corner had been turned particularly as that loss was to Portugal and uh, Cristiano Ronaldo in a, in a game that went wrong but in the 11 since Ireland have won four drawn one and lost six uh, only one three nil victory against Scotland was accompanied by an impressive performance with Armenia and Latvia then uh, beaten 3-2 and Malta 1-0 but it's the inconsistency as well and when we look back at that 3-0 victory over Scotland which was probably the best moment of the Stephen Kenny reign I think and you had uh, Obafemi and Troy Parrott tearing it up up front for this game we had Adam Ida and Evan Ferguson I think Evan Ferguson's emergence has given the next manager a boost but Stephen Kenny almost a problem because he's been moulding a front line for a couple of years like for many of our best games Callum Robinson has been in the team Michael Obafemi's had his moments Troy Parrott I think had he not been unavailable at the start of his reign might have double or treble the number of caps at this stage and his career might be looking quite different so I don't think he's ever found the right mix up front Ogbeni then emerged and became a really viable uh, selection and like against France was you know one Ireland's best player mm. and Seamus Coleman was had a great game then as well. Neither of them available for this match. See, he's not a very lucky general, is he, Stephen Kenny? And but the inconsistency of the team and the selection and uh, yeah, kind of just let Ireland but, down the other night. But but regard exactly yeah because re- regardless of the and we do have probably more attacking talent than we've had before. Let's be honest, there are you know look at the names Kevin has thrown out there. An awful lot of those players show an awful lot of promise, but. From from my point of view, when you line up with wing backs, okay, sometimes some papers or some teams will call it three five two, some will call it five three two, right? Which one of those two formations it ends up being is down to which team has more possession and has the capability to control the game. So if you're playing with wing wing backs and you can control the game, your team will be three five two in shape. If you're playing with wing backs and you can't control the game, your team will be five three two in shape. And like if if they end up getting pinned back as they did you know you're in trouble straight away you're giving the full backs a huge amount of room to come on to and I mean I find it amazing that if you uh, haven't looked at Greece for a couple of their, their previous games I mean there was only ever going to be one of those midfield threes who were going to come out on top in terms of who controlled the game there really really was so again I'll come back to it again if if we take it that we're not able to, to gain control of the game if we go 3v3 in the midfield well, why have we gone 3v3 in midfield surely we go with a surely go with, we go with a more conservative four um, it, it, it did seem it did seem a surprising one for me um, I think it, our, our inability to get the better of teams in and around our level or weaker 
or weaker has been has undone previous managers and is currently undoing our, our, our manager at the minute like we have like we lost the match to France but it was maybe the best performance of the Stephen Kenny reign and it felt like in the stadium that night nearly every member of the of the of the audience watching would have taken a bullet for Kenny and that's one match ago and now uh, you're only as good as your last performance and I think it feels like people have kind of turned them Tommy Connell makes a good point he says um it is a thoroughly baffling scenario, never mind the previous 10 days, which he talks about the great uh, camp that Ireland have supposedly have to prepare for this must-win Greece match or need a result Greece match. He says, the previous three years had been building up to a night like this. The cultural transformation, the technical revolution, the modernising project were, supposed, were finally supposed to culminate in a national team that would be elevated to another level in terms of perform- performance, confidence and results. And I guess the big experiment kind of fell flat in Greece the other night. Yeah, Roy Curse is writing today, just uh, a big fat Greek hiding. Um, just quotes, some of them are quite funny actually, in a gallows way. Uh, in a search for solutions, the Irish capo could hardly have appeared any more confused or forlorn if he'd been tackling the crossword where the clues were presented in the local Cyrillic script. This was a night that washed the colour and credibility from the Kenny delusion when the pendulum of public opinion finally swung away from a hallucinatory acclaim. Loose in defence, invisible in midfield, paperweight in attack, profligate in possession, disorganised about the ball. Kenny's crew more closely resembled a ragtag bunch that has spent the week on the tiles with Jack Grealish <laughs> than rather, uh, in a, rather than an expensive organised training camp in Turkey. So, um, look, I found it a funny line. Obviously, it's I, not a funny I think it would be easier for the supporters of Kenny to put it down as, look, people have, you know, teams have bad matches if there weren't so many kind of in, uh, in the recent history of this see, team. Yeah, and you see, my argument there is right and and I suppose I have one more paragraph highlighted from Paul Rowan where where it, and the reason I've highlighted is, is this from from me to hold my hand up and say that he's talking about me here essentially so he has said the rump of Ireland fans who remain loyal to Kenny are so heavily invested in the Kenny project that they will probably let their hearts rule their heads for a little while longer okay so I am wondering okay do I fall into that that cohort of well, people I've fallen into that uh, bracket Kenny FM that's where they call us here yeah 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 and, and but, look, I, but, but I think that, you know the rationale behind that is that you saw a certain style of football played for a long time I thought Euro 2012 was an absolute disaster for Ireland mm. we qualify for a tournament and we are just terrible absolutely terrible and if, you, if you're thinking that you would have a style of football that is easy on the eye progressive um that Stephen Kenny would have had success with at Dundalk and, and other clubs um, that that philosophy he would do well the under 21s you could kind of if we could if we could play good football and then bring that competitively to tournaments then there's something I'd be prepared to get behind I also I, and it's not much that has been written about it today there's not that much macro analysis and it'll probably come in the next week of the conditions that we're in, the FAI being in such debt, uh, the lack of a shirt sponsor, uh, the brand being mm-hmm. rehabilitated, the fact that they've gone to the government with 863 million of an ask for the next 15 years, the lack of facilities, the really dilapidated nature of League of Ireland grants, the lack of academy structures. Uh, we've spoken about Lee Carsley on the show yesterday as a, a promising under 21 manager uh, of England um, who's been linked obviously with the Ireland job and the resources they have there, obviously buttressed by the Premier League's finance. There's a huge macro element to this that I don't think it matters who the international manager is and sometimes we need to get read about that. Yeah, yeah, that's a it's a very good way of putting it. I mean, you know, if you come on to the conversation of, of, of stick or twist, right, I would still be on the stick side, I would. Um, like Kevin makes the point of previous results. I felt... Not that it's my job, but I suppose it's because of the prism that I'm looking at things through. I felt almost in almost all of the other poor results, I could put forward an argument in terms of a defence for Stephen or he had suffered a, he- a hell of a bad l- lot of bad luck in certain games or there was green shoots in certain games. Oh, f- this this performance is the one that I'm I can't I have no you know I find it very hard to put forward anything positive for him from the night okay it's the first time that I'm kind of lost for words if I was going to to put forward a, a defence for him but it's the first time for me it's the first time it's not for the, Armenia was one time for me I have to say last year 
Yeah, I, I thought I thought we were much, much the better side against Armenia. And again, all the underlying... Like Armenia at home, conceding two goals. Uh, it's just, it, I think for a lot of people that were had faith in this and wanted Stephen to do well and still want him to do well and maybe he can turn around if he does get the opportunity. It's You cannot trust now us to be consistent. Is, yeah, but is that the manager or is that the players? Um, like... But, right, I th- right. but, I, but I think when you're talking about teams around you are weaker than you, that you have to have a base level around that. These boys are not weaker than us. They're not. They're not even around us. I'm telling you, I can't wrap my head around this. You what? All it took was to watch their their Nations League campaign, and you would see particularly that midfield. But why team. France then? Is the France just an easy hit then for us in a way because of the way we we just go behind the ball against France and then just make it hard for them to score and then our forte, spend, yeah. and spend the next ten minutes or the last ten minutes going for it. Yeah, and that's not even Stephen. That's that's Ireland. It's in Ireland's DNA to be quite good at that. Kind of performance isn't it um, Fra- France didn't really show up in Dublin either did they they didn't get a kick they, were poor, they, yeah. they didn't do anything in Dublin whereas Greece Greece were frightening for the first 15 well, minutes Gus so, was made <laughs> to look like Pep Guardiola yeah. good night but Greece really, you know, came out of the blocks and, and their fast start. Gus players players have a lot to do with that as well. Though. Well, I, I, I think no, but they look, they look very technically uh, slick on the ball. Oh yeah, far more on, so than us. Keep an eye on this Greek team over the next while. I'm telling you, I, I think they look very. good. And their supporters not even bought into it. Yeah. And that's the thing is, the our supporters have been bought into this thing. What well, people like, you know, might be sneery about the whole um, uh, people that you know have been uh, supporting Stephen Kenny, but you can't ignore the enthusiasm that has been there at Lansdowne Road in recent times. And I think that kind of is is tied into something Shane speaking about there like you are the, the Irish football cohort and I think that Kenny has clearly mended uh, you know a broken link between grassroots football in Ireland and the international football team and the people who attend the football matches the international matches in Ireland you can see the optimism and there is still probably a groundswell of people in Ireland who uh, who support him but it's the, the youth and the optimism can't always get the job done and it's something Poet spoke about like his Dan McDonald probably gave a, gr- a great breakdown of him, of him in the uh, in the Sunday Independent and you can kind of nearly feel Gus Poet nearly patronising the Ireland team but, but trying to be sympathetic as well he's talking about the inexperienced of youth you're saying I've been there if you have three points or six points you, you must win there's tension it's tough you need a group who's been playing I don't know how many years it's difficult I've been in that situation and it's not for everyone so he's almost like looking at the Irish team going you needed to win here and you pa- picked a bunch of kids against my team and Mac- Daniel McDonald just summarised it by saying in his own way Poyet had offered a damning verdict of Ireland's capabilities a team that appears to be trying to do something different without the belief or experience to really implement it he didn't say it explicitly but on Friday night Kenny's side were easy to play against and I, I think Poyet knew that the breakdown Ireland was to target them early and batter them and maybe drain their confidence really early and getting the goal back was almost miraculous from an Ireland perspective uh, Just to bring you up to date folks on the Gaelic game scores Dublin won 13 Sligo 4 points and Roscommon won 6 Kildare won 4 so at the moment Sligo are going out and Loud are going out as well because they trail Kerry now one eleven to 2 points this is a backlash from Kerry today Mayo 5 points Cork 5 points in the football round robin um, there's a couple of things I, I would have noticed as well. Uh, like, has the constant change in the coaches? Uh, now, let's not talk about their ability of, of, the, of the coaches here, but Damien Duff, Anthony Barry, John Eustace, John O'Shea, has that been a negative for Stephen Oh, Kenny? no doubt about it. Absolutely no doubt about it. it can't, it's, it's, it's so, so, so far from ideal. You get somebody in there, you know, both in terms of, there's two, two reasons why it's a negative, John. There's the work on the training ground and in terms of continuity of, of, of how they're coached and the style of play and all of that the constant chopping and changing is definitely a drawback and then there's also the ability to you know to grow bonds between people and again the fact that that person keeps turning over and like any manager will tell you that the bond between the coach and the players is almost always stronger than the bond between the manager and the players because the manager is the one who you know rubs the, annoys them and rubs them up the wrong way by not picking them the coach is always able to you know soften that blow for them a little bit players will always get be, get closer and, and have a better bond with, with coaches almost always anyway than they will with the manager so the fact that that person has kept turning over and it's a different person all the time that that definitely hasn't worked in, in their favour so, look I suppose on the sticker twist because I think it's worth coming on to the twist in a minute just in terms of some of the names that are, are being thrown out there this added ice keen thing is just like I just well, I, 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 can't, I can't do this anymore <laughs> I'll come to that that's definitely the one that I want to talk about alright just on on the stick right the last thing I'd say on, on the the only the only 
kind of positivity that I can come out with for Stephen on the back of things, right? Are, are you look at the Matt Doherty comments that I'm looking at in the mail here, right? I understand. I'm not stupid, John. I understand no current player is going to say their manager should be sacked, all right? But at the same time, there's different ways in which you can answer the question. You can give a kind of a PC correct answer of, oh no, we're behind him and we'll stick with him and we're, we're all there for him and then leave it at that, right? Like, to be fair, Matt Doherty has been a hell of a lot stronger than that. He says, they are absolutely the right people for the job. We are prepared unbelievably well. They do everything for us. Behind the scenes, the staff, the manager, Keith, Shazy, Dino, for me, they are absolutely the right people and I don't even know how there is spec- how there can be speculation there. Like, and he comes out with a few more comments as well after that you know I don't think a manager who has lost the dressing room doesn't get people coming out swinging that hard for them I do still believe he might have you know a a larger portion of the Irish public might now be against him a larger portion of the Irish media might be now turning against him but I do still believe the players might be there for him I suppose the only people that matter really are the FAI board Um, and it's it's whether they have um in their own minds, justification for it, and like to be honest, like if you read all the writing today, it's 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 looking pretty bleak. It's looking pretty bleak now. There might be a stay of execution, um, like to encompass the Dutch home and away games, the Greece game at home, maybe a playoff if we get through this convoluted Nations League system. Um, that's not still out of the question. Um, you don't think it's going to happen? Not a whole pie, you know, I, You've gone through. You've never crunched the numbers. Before a ball was kicked. Before a, well, okay, if we get into the playoffs, do you see how the, how the playoffs work? I mean, we wouldn't have a hope in hell of, of coming we, through that. We've got to win two games, yeah. Yeah, like there, I, I, before a ball was kicked in this campaign, once the draw was made, our, our fate was sealed. I couldn't see how we were going to qualify once the well, draw was well, made. It, 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 maybe the, the fate of the team was sealed, but it's it's the fate of the, the current yeah. team, the, the manager and the current players uh, under Stephen. You have to see progression. You have to see a degree of performance. Or even And then you have to see four wins in 23 competitive games is what everybody's going to point to as a statistic here. Um, so let's bring in Sam Allardyce and Robbie Keane and everything will be wonderful. Well... <laughs> <laughs> the, the only argument for that is, I guess, you still you still have to pick from the current crop. You're not you're not looking at the pick that Kenny had from when he took over. Aging players, you know, a lot of players past their best. You're still looking at the generation he's brought through, and can a more experienced manager get more from? Well, the we've group got a texture in here. Um, I wanted Stephen Kenny to succeed, but it's hard going now. Little to be positive about. That said, I don't fancy the prospect of Big Sam and Robbie and back to Trapattoni type football where we get points, but awful to watch. Which is I'm kind of talking about earlier on. If possible, with coaches like Graham Potter already how to do better with the squad improve players more than Kenny has well they would but they're not going to be interested in the job so we're left with p- potentially two options that have been thrown out in the media the Allardyce Keane one I mean this is just laughable I mean anybody seriously entertaining this as an idea I just think is absolutely it would be to be honest with you it would appeal to me more if I just heard Robbie Keane's name than if than been told Allardyce and Robbie Sam. Keane um, to be honest well, you know the, 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 it's a job it's still a job that will have people are interested in it if, if it does come to pass and like, as I said I hope Stephen Kenny succeeds and turns it around but if like Roy Keane is definitely gonna, you know, somebody Roy Keane is somebody that's, that will be in the conversation for this kind of thing Chris Hewson, Lee Carsley, the people will be in the conversation. Yeah, well, who, who, who wouldn't love to see Roy um, have a crack at it? It would be, it would be brilliant to see it. Um, look, the Lee Carsley one is obviously the one that 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 makes the most. He's sense. the England under twenty one manager. England under twenty one manager. He's been doing, you know, he's been doing really, really well. Um, City, Brentford, primarily in underage roles. Now England with underage roles. I did, I did an hour long coaching podcast episode with him myself. I found him extremely interesting guy. Really, really intriguing. Very, very very forthright in his thoughts about the game um, and yeah I think it is pretty well known in, in, in circles that he would be uh, it would be something that would appeal to him um, and I think if there was to be a change that that would certainly you would imagine he'd be uh, quick, very quickly chalked up as the, as the bookie's favourite um, and if there had to be a change which I still don't think there should be but if there had to be a change he is a guy I would love to see have a crack at 5 three, one, six, lads France is like a cup match pros can raise their game on occasion Greece is a league game to think we could come anywhere near replicating the French performance twice in a row was crazy I always support him but on this occasion the book stops with him and his team selection says no I think there's a couple of things as well I think there's a lack of shouters in the Irish team there's a lack of a Mick McCarthy type Mick McCarthy was not as good as footballers David O'Leary for example but Jack Charlton saw him as representative on the pitch he's an organiser he's a stopper he's a shouter 
better. And maybe in time, Gavin Mazzuno, Evan Ferguson will become those people. But I kind of felt we lacked that the other night. We lacked that voice. We lacked to calm it down or to do whatever or to foul people or to slow play down in the first 15, 20 minutes, to hit the ball long, to do something. Yeah. You know, it, it just it feels that that, 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 element of it I, I didn't kind of see there tonight yeah well that again John I suppose that comes with youth again that does come back to how young the side is and I always always make the argument that I don't think you can actually I don't think people can actually fully comprehend the loss that Seamus Coleman is as a person when he's out of that dressing room and out of that team um, he is that shouter and roarer as we, we've seen his his comments often get picked up by Mike's in Premier League games where he's, he's he's roaring at others and likes to be confrontational and he is you know he is a guy I repeatedly keep saying he's a guy who just has leader printed across his forehead and without him there um, there's definitely a, a, a drop off in our uh, aggression and competitiveness in, in my opinion yeah we got to take a break before we go there um, let's bring you up to speed on the Gaelic Games 2.14 for Kerry 2 points for Loud the round robin six points to five Cork lead Mayo Roscommon one six Kildare one four what is happening up at Breffney Park Dublin are playing Sligo Neil Ewing Hi John how's it going uh, half time here uh, complete turnaround since we spoke last Sligo had started encouragingly but they're now one thirteen to four points down I guess the, the game has turned on that 18 minute goal from Conor Callan fisted into the net after a great uh, great fetch by um, Paddy Small inside in the full forward line my biggest worry for Sligo since before the week before the Connor final was going to be uh, their own kickouts and getting possession from their own kickouts, and that's really become very starkly evident today. Uh, Dublin's physicality, their athleticism around the middle, they've cut out all the longer options for Sligo, forced Sligo into kickout options they didn't want to take. Sligo guys have been taking the ball under pressure, forced into turnovers, and to be honest, uh, Lee Gannon and uh, Conor Callan were in for goal chances, which they fisted over the bar. Um, you know another day they, they easily could have been buried into the net um, Sligo have had a few positive moments great turnover by Luke Nicholson uh, Sligo p- picked up the break won a free got, got a score on the board Pat Spillane broke through had a great goal chance you know really would, would have uh, pulled them back into the game and I think importantly for Sligo uh, put a bit of belief back into them they really went into their shells which is again that's the vicious circle of their own kickouts. it's reduced their options lads maybe aren't making runs that they would have made before picked up an injury as well Luke Towie uh, who has AFL experience will be one of the I guess uh, the players for Sligo with, with a lot of legs uh, he's got off injured which is going to be a blow in the second half and I guess you could probably sum up the contrast in that Luke Towie came off in, injured uh, and then just before half time I seen uh, Jack McCaffrey skipping down the tunnel like a man who looked like he was getting ready for action in the second half uh, so that, that's the options that Dublin have to bring on with Sligo have lost one of their big runners so yeah as I say one thirty to four and Dublin uh, yeah they look like a team that, that could top the group here with a, with a big win OK Neil Ewing thanks so much from uh, Kingspan Breffney Park uh, just to give a shout out to James McLean 100 caps tomorrow against Gibraltar um, just uh, David Kelly in the uh, Sunday Independent today an article on him uh, Garvon Downey has written two books about the Craig and talking about um, James McLean and this is a quote his background was tough it's not an easy road up from where he was but he's developed into such a role model doesn't drink doesn't gamble doesn't brag you talk about him being consistent either in his devotion to football or his political stance he's utterly incorruptible because he's a principal person he goes back to so many charities and good causes here he genuinely remembers where he's from and determined to make life better not just for himself but for the people coming after him we've got to take a break with Shane Keegan the co boss and Kevin Byrne Irish boxing correspondent of The Sun on the Sunday Paper Review lots more to come after this The Sunday Papers on Off The Ball Get ready to heat up your summer Hello. with the electrifying summer cash machine. Hello. Here's the deal. We'll announce a daily cash amount. 20,000. Enter. 61,000. And if we call you back. 22,000. You have just five rings to answer with the exact amount. 328 euros. 82 euros. Down to the cent. 95 cents. Sorry. Win the cash and make your summer dreams a reality. I don't believe this. Oh my sweet God. I'm actually my turn to leave at the moment. I might extend it a little bit longer. The Summer Cash Machine. Your passport to a summer of cash. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Terms and conditions apply. Visit Newstalk.com for more. Design driven by impulse. Performance in tune with your emotions. An instant connection. Electric. At Cupra, we believe in galvanizing these instincts. 
It's why the Cooper Born, our 100% electric model, looks, feels and behaves unlike anything else on the road. Start seeing what's possible and go full electric with the Cooper Born. Act on your impulse. Test drive today. Own it tomorrow. Search Cooper Official. Make it a summer to really remember with Go Breaks. From family getaways to romantic hideaways. Discover our best hotel deals now at gobreaks.ie. Go Breaks. It's showmyvan.ie Hi, I'm Ken Doherty. For all van drivers and business owners, insuremyvan.ie is Ireland's low-cost van and commercial insurance specialist. For high-quality van and all commercial insurances, call insuremyvan.ie City Financial Marketing Group Limited trading as insuremyvan.ie is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. This summer, Kaleidoscope welcomes Niall Rogers and Cheek, Gavin James, Bewitched, Fun-Loving Criminals, Newton Faulkner, Dublin Gospel Choir, and more. Join us for three days of family fun in Wicklow's Rusborough House from June 30th to July 2nd. Tickets start from only €250 Euro for a family of four camping. Plus, kids go free on adult day tickets. Available on Ticketmaster. For more, visit kaleidoscopefestival.ie. Additional charges may apply. Terms and conditions apply. Subject to licence. Ishka Erin is the new name for Irish water. Our continued focus is to deliver clean, safe and reliable national public drinking water and wastewater services for Ireland. For any questions about public water services or to report an issue in your area, call us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week on 1-800-278-278 or visit water.ie. Ishka Aaron. Delivering water services for Ireland. Summer is here and that's why Super Value is making sure it's the summer of savings. Enjoy great offers like save 33% in our Irish steak sale with strip loin and cowboy steak. Heineken six pack cans only 12 euro and money off vouchers every week on the app. For a summer of savings it's got to be Super Value. Enjoy alcohol responsibly. At Power City you can recycle your old electrical appliances free. To find out more, go online to powercity.ie or call in store today. And Sean, who's just arrived into the bar for a quick hello to the work crowd. He won't stop, he has a match in the morning. But wait, he's got the nod off the barman that there's getting 0 0 on tap. The chats are back on. Johnny's in full swing and a fresh point is headed over the bar. Guinness 0 0. 100% Guinness, 0% alcohol. Proud partner of the GAA. Visit drinkaware.ie. Go 5G with GOMO. Get ready to connect faster, better, stronger than ever before with GOMO's unlimited 5G speeds available across Ireland. And you know it's GOMO, so you know all calls, all texts, all data and all 5G are included for just $14.99 a month for life. For more, visit GOMO.ie. It's time to go 5G. It's time to GOMO. Unlimited allowance subject to fair use. 30-day contract applies. A one-stop SIM activation fee of $14.99 applies for full details, terms, roaming and fair use. See GOMO.ie. The Sunday Papers on Off The Ball. And you're welcome back to Off The Ball here on News Talk for your Sunday. John Duggan with you today until six and Stephen Dolby with us later on as well in the presenter's chair. Uh, you want to text us? You can 53106 at the cost of 30 cent. We're continuing the Sunday paper review now with the Irish boxing correspondent of The Sun, Kevin Byrne and the Cove Ramblers boss Shane Keegan, as well as listening across the country on this Father's Day on News Talk. You can also watch us on our live streams for Periscope on Twitter at Off The Ball, YouTube, Facebook as well. Uh, Rashida Adeleke is the hot prospect in Irish sport at the moment and a couple of articles on her in the Sunday papers, lads. Yeah, there's some excellent pieces uh, trying to put her her accomplishments of late into context and possibly for the readers who who don't know as much about uh, athletics and the kind of the structure of the US collegiate system and the turning professional. So and like two two of the best writers in Irish sports journalism at the minute have tackled the issue, Cahill Dennehy and Michael Foley. And it kind of strikes me that they've they've almost taken a similar approach. They've they've set up some of the pitfalls. They've interviewed former kind of or and former and current track and field stars to try and put Adelecki's accomplishments into some sort of context and also maybe give a warning like people don't get too optimistic because there's a lot of pitfalls ahead but also this is extre- this is an extremely exciting time for Irish athletics as well. So, so she won an NCAA title last week in the States and she's taken the a second and a half of her time in 400 metres in the last year and her time last uh, week 49.2 was the third quickest in the world this year. There's an Olympic Games in Paris next year. 
Yeah, look, she essentially has a big decision to make at the moment. Um, the two pieces, as as Kevin says, are, are, are quite similar. They're both, they both decide to, they're both almost trying to advise her. Um, both people speak to, to different people. Carl Dennehy speaks to Sonia O'Sullivan, Kira Megan, and um, Barr, remind me of his first name. Thomas Barr Thomas is in Barr, there as well, yeah. yeah. Um, whereas uh, Michael Foley speaks to uh, Eamon Coughlin and also uh, the, the, the name will come back to me in a second Cullen um, Mary Cullen yes. Mary yeah. Cullen yeah. and it, it's it's really really interesting to, to, to hear the advice they give but first of all Cahill himself is, is very good he's done a lot of research here. he's able to even go into numbers with us and, and give us a really kind of clear indication of the kind of uh, outcomes depending on which decision she makes so he reckons here one agent who has worked with multiple NCAA medalists who spoke to the Sunday Independent at the Oslo Diamond League last week. So Carl was obviously there last week and managed to get a huge amount of his info. He was he was certainly on on, uh, on work hours over there. So he was. He's done a hell of a lot of digging while he was over there. Um, but this this um, agent estimated she could negotiate a contract between two hundred dollars and four hundred dollars. Sorry, two hundred thousand dollars, obviously, and four hundred thousand dollars per year, which um, has got to be tempting has certainly got to be tempting um, and then they go into the kind of money that other people are are earning from um, sponsorship deals and everything that, that might get there he's able to tell us that agents would typically get 15% cut of the athlete's income though the bigger the contract the smaller that percentage um, he says that for Adelecki uh, being Irish will not add value to her deal given the size of the market here but her profile in the US as an NCAA champion certainly will um, and that's the big thing here is I would be pretty sure this girl could walk around most streets in Dublin and nobody have a clue who had passed them by I think we're a bit away from her having the profile that could explode in her direction in 12 months time I mean July next year is is the Olympics this is a girl who's uh, I think the, her time last week um, was the third fastest yeah. this year which therefore obviously puts her you would think into potential certainly well another year improvement ahead yeah. uh, Adric Florial as our coach University of Texas there's a quote one, it's in the same article if Adeleke stays in Texas and does turn pro she'll no longer train and travel with her college team with many of the same supports will be in place the professional circuit largely based in Europe will be a very different setting athletes typically travel alone to events and they're meeting hotels they're required to share a room with another competitor often somebody they've never met who may or may not speak the same language it is lonely because there's a lot of meets you go to and you're the only parish person there says Thomas Barr so I think the key thing about this is the advice Rashida Adeleke is getting and the quality of the advice that's very important for a 20 year old who has the world at her feet has a hugely promising Irish prospect and I just hope for her sake whatever decision she makes whether it's turning pro now or later on that she makes the right decisions. There's a couple of great bits here in uh, the, the Mick Foley piece. He's talking about uh, Eamon Coughlin, the great uh, dub when he was breaking through. He At the, at the 1976 NCAA Championships, he raced wearing an Adidas and Puma shoe on either foot before settling on one brand. The Puma guy came through with a leather jacket, he says. So like, <laughs> even there in the 70s, this is nearly 50 years ago, Like, there's there's all this battle to get, you know, to become the sponsor of the potential athlete, the potential superstar. And Mary Cullen then gives a warning, a couple of paragraphs later uh, she started to get injured and but because she had a sponsor she said I didn't want to let my sponsor down so she was able to get fit quite quickly but I didn't have the work done previously um, and then she says I had a great heart and lungs but I was like a lad of car always breaking down I could get really fit in, in six weeks but then probably push too hard so with with the growing profile and with the growing potential of Adelecki comes the big money sponsorships which is, which is laid out here, here across a couple of thousand words but then once you do attract the sponsors then will the body cooperate so that you need to find these, a nice these deposit. contracts as it's highlighted in the articles these contracts are massively incentivized mass uh, in that you have a, su a successful year your income is you know beyond your wildest dreams you have a poor year and your income is extremely low extremely extremely low and saying that you were injured or fatigued or anything like that just doesn't wash you you they're, they, 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 the sponsors don't want to hear that they're, they're not going to stump up the that, money there's also probably a much higher ceiling of her being over there in Texas in terms of what she can earn than being here in Ireland as a say a boxer or, oh, yeah. you, know, you know yourself from the amateur 
the game it, it, well like it's kind of like in boxing as well like it can be quite quite ruthless like you miss a tournament and all of a sudden you might miss your grant because you haven't reached a, a podium stage that you were supposed to hit and all of a sudden you've no money next year and Adelecki it sounds, it sounds the same somebody's contracts like you're saying Shane are incentivized so if she misses a world championships or an Olympic Games possibly through injury the sponsorship is right up I don't. I wouldn't profess to know too much about the US uh, athletic system or even about the, the sport I, I enjoy it like like most Irish sports fans and wouldn't it be amazing to have a sprinting success at the Olympic Games I think in, one of the, in um, Carl Dennis's piece he mentions it's, it will be Ireland's first Olympic sprint medal for 92 Bob, years Bob Tisdall in Los Angeles there you go so uh, keep doing what you're doing uh, and hopefully you know don't change too much until after the Olympics but are both, over but both as you say both yeah. Kieran Egan and, and Mary Cullen both highlight that it's it's very often not just a straight upward trajectory both had, had a, a huge amount of success in their early 20s tapered off massively in their mid 20s before kind of reappearing then in their latter 20s now look as a sprinter you're probably looking at your 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 best years, I would think, uh, having to be kind of in and around your mid twenties. Yeah, I just like hopefully uh, just get that she gets great advice, whatever advice she gets, and uh, I think that there is no rush. Uh, you know, she could be a, an Olympic champion still in the University of Texas. You know, to be fair to both journalists in terms of advice, you could do a hell of a lot worse than reading both or articles. Yeah. Because there's a hell of a lot of advice oh. from there from people who have, oh. who have tread that path. I'm sure she will in the football. Dublin two fifteen, Sligo four points. Sligo are not going through. Roscommon one eight, Kildare one six. Kerry two fifteen, Lad three points. This is a statement from Kerry and Mayo five points Cork six Joe brady has got an entertaining piece I felt today on uh, on his enjoyment of hurling uh, vis-a-vis football at the moment yeah yeah he certainly has um, in, the Sunday, in the Sunday Independent yeah because we keep saying it's kind of re- repeat yourself when you're talking about Joe in that you can agree or disagree with Joe but he is likely to entertain you pretty much every time um, he has but I, I'll be honest when I was reading it I was initially trying to and maybe <laughs> I still don't know if I've come to a conclusion the conversation that he he plays out for us between Marty Morrissey and and Eamon is, is that a real conversation or is that an imagined conversation um, by Joe. I, I wasn't 100% well, sure see, as I was is, reading it. You have to have been watching to know and uh, that's the problem <laughs> isn't it I guess that the Colonel of Much GA analysis as many people there's not many people yeah, watching football look, at the Yeah look the point whether it's a real conversation or not the point Joe is trying to make here is that he uh, he reckons Marty is 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 the uh, what's the phrase he uses he, uh, certainly the, 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 the uh, sorry he is an electrifying commentator but when he is covering football he's reduced to sounding like a bingo caller at an old, lady, an old people's home um, and then he plays out this imaginary conversation for us um, that Marty is having in studio while watching a, a, a game of football or maybe it was a real conversation I'm, as I say I'm still not 100% sure he then says look even Marty at the moment unfortunately can't make football sound overly excited overly exciting whereas when he is commentating on hurling he is like the rest of us literally just describing he doesn't even have to create any hyperbole whatsoever he's just calling what he's seeing in front of his eyes and it's leading to, to absolute drama after drama after talking point after talking point point. Um, and look it's hard to argue against that at the moment it is hard to argue against that well, I was just going through the scores today they're all so predictable Antrim by the way beating Carla 119 to 115 at Cargan Park to reach the semi-finals of the Tolton Cup well done Andy McEntee uh, fair play to him uh, but in any of the games like at the moment Kerry are ooh they're um, they're doing a tip are they they're 18 points up against Louth Dublin are now ooh um, 20 points up against Sligo Ross Common a point up against Kildare, uh, Cork a point up against Mayo. My issue with the whole thing, I think though, I, I think my feeling about this, and I haven't read the Joe Berardi article, is um, it's dulling the sense as the competition format because uh, the the structures for me are minimally boring and devoid of real meaning. Uh, until next weekend for a lot of counties not every county I think uh, Neil Ewing expressed uh, quite eloquently why Sligo have had a really um, you know good beneficial year around having these extra games but you have a league where is the real meaning out of a league unless you're a Sligo wins a division four are Mayo going to matter if they win the league if they lose the All-Ireland later this year you then have the provincials where's the meaning around the provincials in football or maybe apart from Ulster then you have this convoluted round robin structure of 24 games to reduce 16 teams into 12 where's the meaning to, until you reach the knockout phase next weekend I think from next weekend it's going to get a lot better I think that's when the abandon that we're lacking at the moment will come into it but, uh, but I think the problem here to be honest with you is Joe is less so complaining about 
structures and yawning gaps between two teams playing each other or you know matches that don't carry any real kind of significant relevance depending on the result he's more so moaning about the actual the actual game itself the quality the, of the game the quality of the game and, I think and the though, style of play I think we're when seeing. we're getting into matches that really mean something I think that the, I think the games will open up a bit more and then you'll have the quality of the games that we saw at the end of last year's championship yeah it's the height is the um when we get further along and there's more at stake is that not likely to lead to teams being even more well, cautious yeah, yeah. possibly um, is the only all worry all I can do is go on some of the games I've seen yeah I hope, you, I, ho- I hope you're right I re- I really well, maybe then again that's because of the best teams no no look I, I, I really really hope you're right um, it is interesting that he makes the point in his article that the one um the one shining light amid all this that he he's he's declaring as boredom, I suppose, is is David Clifford. Um, I have to be honest, John. When Aidan outside there gave me a, a, a shout to see could I do the the paper review today, I initially looked at the diary and and saw nothing in it and said, "Yep, yeah, great, stick me down for that." And then a couple of hours later, I realised that David Clifford was kicking football in Port Leash, and I was going to miss mm. out on on that site. So I'm 100 percent in agreement with uh, yeah. with Joe on on that front. I was coming out of Port Leash at. 12 o'clock today John and the buzz around the place pretty much based purely on David Clifford is yeah. in town was quite remarkable it really really was so he That's is almost one. like a Messi Ronaldo you know the way oh, pe- yeah. you know the way people now follow almost stars players, instead of teams as, yeah yeah yeah, there's a bit of that, isn't there? I, I, I've been coaching the schools all week, and every every young fella and most of the, the, the young girls that was coaching in there were, were all commenting on the fact that David Clifford was going to be in town on Saturday, and they were going to go and and, and watch it and the whole lot. Um, but look, I, again, you know, what's the solution here? It's you know very very easy to 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 you know bemoan things at the moment. Um, I wouldn't. I'm not normally one who argues for rule changes for this and rule changes for that and everything, but. You you would have to look at things at the moment and question whether there's a need. Kevin Byrne of the Irish Sun and Shane Keegan, the co-ramblers manager, are with us on the Sunday pay-per-view. You want to text us 53106. We're back after the news with many more articles to digest. The Sunday Papers on Off The Ball. We're hitting the streets with a new fleet of electric vehicles thanks to our exciting partnership with Volkswagen. Make the change to all electric driving with a best selling ID4 from Volkswagen, official car partner of Newstalk. The moment you got told the good news. Rob, you made the panel. When the lads added you into the group, skipping nights out, missing the crack, re watching classics and learning new tricks. Being driven to the biggest game of your life by your mam. And then you finally come on in the 51st minute. It's the minor moments that last a lifetime. The Electric Ireland GAA Minor Championships. This is major. Switch off the radio. Switch on the out of office. Switch on the indicator. Take that next exit and see where the switch takes you. Let the concrete jungle become the open country road. Let the 90 degree turns become curvaceous sweeping moves. Let the city disappear in the rear view mirror. The Ford Cougar plug-in hybrid. Switch from petrol to electric, electric to petrol at the touch of a button. And switch on the adventure. Ford, bring on tomorrow. The future is yours for the taking. When you become one of the 8,000 students across the island of Ireland studying with the Open University. Join the experts in distance learning on one of many internationally recognised degrees and skills-based short courses. And suddenly, your options are thrown wide open. Search OU Ireland to find out more. The Open University. The future is open. Hi. Did you know that your Irish Life pension could help the planet? By investing less in companies that harm the environment and more in those trying to help it, while always aiming to give you the strongest possible return. See irishlife.ie for pension funds that have a responsible approach or speak to your financial broker or advisor. Irish Life Assurance PLC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Throbbing headache, toothache, backache, period pain. No one pain is the same. But for all those everyday pains, there's a moment when you start to feel release. That moment when you start to get back to being you. And you feels amazing. Panadol Extra Film Coated Tablets. Powerful pain relief. Release starts here. 
Contains paracetamol. Always read the label leaflet. Two gig full fiber broadband from Virgin Media is rolling out to more homes across Ireland. Hear that, Aoife? Huh? Time to lose yourself in the latest Scandi crime series. Going on I have no idea what's going on here. You should really put on the subtitles. Fair point. Whatever your genre, whatever way you play, Virgin Media is here. Switch today at virginmedia.ie or call in store. Virgin Media, it's playtime. Subject to location and availability. Looking for a memorable getaway? Look no further. This summer, live the moment at Castleknock Hotel. Immerse yourself in our stylish rooms. Unwind by the pool. Savor mouth-watering cuisine at our award-winning restaurant. Or embrace the lively ambience of our two sun-filled patios. And when it's time to explore, our prime location puts you right in the heart of the action. Explore more at castleknockhotel.com. Join me, Frank Rainey, on Inside the Crime as we take a closer look at some of the most harrowing criminal cases in Ireland. From the shocking murders of Sharon Whelan and her two young daughters The bodies are out being pulled out of the house. To the brutal, unsolved murder of talented RT set designer Charles Self in 1982. Charles was slumped at the end of the stairs. But Inside the Crime isn't just about the cases themselves. It's about the people affected by them, the families left behind, the detectives tasked with bringing the killers to justice and the communities rocked by tragedy. Should life mean life or this type of crime? Inside the Crime, a News Talk original, is available now on Newstalk.com, on the News Talk app, powered by Go Loud, and wherever you get your podcasts. On 106 to 108 FM, on the News Talk app, powered by Go Loud, and smart speakers. This, this is News Talk. It's three o'clock. I'm Lindsay Dolan. Good afternoon. The President has issued a strongly worded warning about deviating from Ireland's traditional policy on neutrality. Michael D. Higgins said the country is playing with fire during a dangerous period of drift in foreign policy and should avoid burying itself in other people's agendas. His comments in today's Business Post come ahead of a government forum on international security, which meets next week in Cork, Galway and in Dublin. Socialist Party TD for Cork North Central, Mick Barry, believes the majority of Irish people will back the president. My opinion is that Michael D. Higgins has nailed it. He says that the Irish government are playing with fire and he says that Michal Martin's security forum, which kicks off in Cork on Thursday, is stacked. So any attempt to silence the president on these issues in the next couple of days will cause a big crisis for the government. The government remains split over whether to allow Garthi to use facial recognition technology. Justice Minister Helen McEntee is among those in favour of the move, but some Green Party TDs have concerns around the impact on civil liberties. Helen McEntee said she won't comment further while discussions are ongoing. I think we're all very much of the view that we need to make sure Gardaí have body cameras, that they're rolled out as quickly as possible. And I am very clearly on the record as saying I think that in gathering all of the information through body cameras that we should have facial recognition, that the Gardaí can access this information as quickly as possible. But I am still working that through with colleagues. Ireland's team at the Special Olympics have joined competitors from around the world as the Games were officially opened in Berlin last night. Some 73 athletes are competing for Team Ireland between June 17th and 25th in 12 sports. Anya Turley's daughter Margaret is playing basketball in the Special Olympics and she says it's a dream come true. She used to play with Sports Club 15 in Blanchestown, Castleknock and she got through to the finals and she's one of 10 athletes on the basketball team team and they've been hosted very very well here in Berlin. We, I've been here for the last week and we've had a wonderful welcome here. A status yellow thunderstorm warning is in place today for most of the country as heavy downpours look likely to continue. All counties in Munster and Connacht have been issued with the warning by Met Aaron, including 10 other counties. The weather alert is in place until 10 o'clock tonight. It's two minutes past three. News Talk Weather. Thanks to Ryanair. Rain, rain, go away. Summer halls are just one click away with Ryanair's low fare flights to Greece, Italy and Spain. Scattered showers will become more widespread into the afternoon and evening, some turning heavy with the potential for thunderstorms, hail and flooding. Highs of 18 to 22 degrees. Now you're up to date on News Talk. The Sunday Papers on Off the Ball.
And you're welcome back to Off the Ball here on News Talk for your Sunday afternoon. Happy Father's Day, John Duggan, sitting in for John Malloy. We're on air till six, as well as listening to the pay per view on News Talk now across the country on your radio. You can watch us if you'd like on our live streams on YouTube, Facebook, and on Off the Ball on Twitter. We're continuing the review with the Irish boxing correspondent of The Sun, Kevin Byrne, and the co Rambler's boss, Shane Keegan. Um, I'm just going to. I'm not going to go into this, but I do think it, it is worth reading for uh, racing fans and for anybody who's interested in human interest. It's very, it's an upsetting article, to be honest. Uh, David Walsh in the Sunday Times interview with Roger Varian, who is a very successful flat race horse trainer and will have a runners at Royal Ascot uh, next week. He had a second at the Derby there behind Aidan O'Brien's horse with King of Steel, 66 to one shot recently at Epsom, 140 winners last season. Um, but you read about it in the news, but you never think it will happen to you until it does. Trainer Roger Varian reveals how the shocking death of his brother has given him the strength to succeed. Um, his brother was murdered. Uh, his name is Christopher, back in 2010. Um, and it's just a very, very tough read, but beautifully written uh, by David to just kind of, um, with the respect he showed to the family and to Roger. So anybody who wants, he should, it's a, I think an essential read for, for, for today's uh, papers, Roger Varian and David Walsh in the, in the Sunday Times. Definitely had the most impact on me today. Um, you also um, have got uh, an article about Zambia coming to Dublin to reference. Yeah, I, they're playing the women's team. I, I think, just, they, Kevin? They're playing the, the women's team in a friendly and I didn't expect myself to be reading a two-page spread about Zambia, Zambian women's football today. But That's here great. It's the ingenuity around that. That sounds good. Yeah, so it's by Mark Gallagher in the Irish Mail on Sunday and, you know, it starts off by a uh, you know, a, like a going away do basically for Zambia. They're off to the World Cup, the Women's World Cup. I think it's their first World Cup, men or women. A football mad country. They've had their own problems setting up football systems, just as we've had, but they haven't had anything like the measure of success we have. So all of their fate, kind of like us as well, is, is in their women's football team at the minute. And they're all particularly inspired by uh, Barbara Banda. Uh, their top footballer who I'm not too familiar with but who uh, by all accounts lit up the Olympic Games but then wasn't allowed to play at the African Cup of Nations because there's a t- testosterone issue almost like Castor Semenya had so but it, Mark lays it all out and lays out the problems Zambia have had and, and their, their hopes and their potential and I guess that the match has been set up as a way for Ireland to play against African opposition to set up for the Nigeria match at the World Cup but it's just it's a good read and it kept me, it kept me intrigued until the end it's only a month away now, Shane. Yeah, really, really looking forward to it. Um, I was in the library the other day and picked up a brilliant fair play from an absolutely fantastic uh, Irish Women's World Cup squad activity book that they're giving out free in, in the libraries. Um, my goddaughter is is football mad and Katie McCabe mad and the whole lot. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to get up next week, so we are. Um, and she will be, as I will be, absolutely glued to it and rolls around. Really can't wait. Now... I know this is a Sunday paper review, but there was a, just a beautiful article written during the week by Brendan O'Brien, who people might know from the Irish Examiner, and he's also been a guest on this uh, program before. Kevin, yeah, um, like it's it's the weekend edition, so we thought we might uh, yeah. squeeze it in, all right, uh, for the Examiner, and they don't have a Sunday paper, so it's all good. Like, and I know Brendan's been in this chair before, and he's one of the more one of the most respected sports journalists in Ireland, but he's taken on probably one of the most difficult tasks he can he can take on in journalism. You know, writing about a loved one who's died and doing it to introduce that person to a public who don't know him really like but it does seem like he was a larger than life character in you know back in Port Leash and, and everybody knew him and I'm sure you can speak to that yourself Shane like Brendan lays it out he's sports mad he's like a Liverpool f- a super fan a Deportivo La Coruña Kevin was Yep, Kevin. Yes, and uh, he just talks about their their love affair, how it began with uh, Deportivo Deportivo La Coruña, and that's ultimately where a large part of like Kevin's ashes were were scattered. And he just talks about the friendships and the bonds that sport created, and uh, it's it's a great story. It's across two pages, and it's heartfelt and just brilliantly done by uh, by Brendan. Yeah, um, Jenny, it's mad. I was I was delighted when Kevin texted into our WhatsApp group and said, it's, "Look, even though this came out yesterday, is it worth discussing?" And and there, again, one of the reasons it is worth discussing is Brendan has it pinned on his his Twitter feed at the moment, so anybody who wants can just click there and, and read the full article today, and I'd advise them to do so. Um, 
I, I'll be honest I, I read it yesterday um, and I knew Kevin uh, Kevin is heavily involved in, in Portage Soccer Club as is referenced a few times within the article here um, while I was out of the League of Ireland I actually managed the, the, the senior football team at, at Portage Soccer Club for a, a couple of seasons so I was heavily involved there myself and you'd regularly see Kevin around the place um, as part of that role I also did a couple of coaching workshops that Kevin would have come on he was managing the, the, the under 14s um, along with, with Gordon who's also referenced in the piece um, and I, I never knew he was Brendan's brother I never knew he was Brendan's brother until yesterday <laughs> until I read this piece and yeah it's, it, there's a couple of really uh, bits that suck you in I mean even just that picture in the middle of it is fantastic I mean who on earth has a half and half jersey <laughs> of Deportivo La Coruña and Leash Gaelic football what yes yeah, look at this right there, John. it's a half and half wow, jersey so, so, so of Depor and uh, I don't know if I can hold that up to the cameras or whether that can be picked yeah, up yeah. on the camera but uh, an absolutely brilliant jersey but and and just the stories around that link and like how solid that link was okay it, it's it's great to hear about this big group of 30 plus guys from, from Leash and, and Port Leash um, going over to Deportivo games but it's much funnier hearing about the Deportivo boys coming over to watch Leash play in the Leinster Football Championship <laughs> um, so it is so really really great relationship that's formed between them but I suppose the real essence of the piece is in the fact that you know if I w- if I if I were to talk about any of the abo- of of the m- my strongest memories now obviously thank thankfully my my dad is still very very much around but my strongest memories in recent times in past times almost any memory the really great memory I have of dad is sports related my son is only eight yet already almost any really good me- memory that we have so far is sports related like for all of you know I was in chatting with you last week and Johnny went off on his rant and rave about where the money is coming from from Man City and where the money is coming from from golf and all I understand all of that but like these this is the reason why sport is absolutely fantastic because it, it has a way of helping create memories memories that Brendan has with his brother memories that we all have with with friends and family that nothing else is capable of creating those kind of memories absolutely nothing else is capable of of creating those and Brendan just does a fantastic job of kind of giving us an overview of some of those memories that he has managed to create with his brother and this uh, really really strange relationship that uh, a group of guys from Leash and Port Leash have with, with Deportivo La Coruña yeah, it's a, it's great stuff. Like he he talks about like De, like Deportivo. We all I'm sure most of us remember like the great Champions League teams. Alburn. Yeah, yeah. The Chels, yeah. And like they they were a Euro- European superpower. They were always like underdogs, but you know they didn't they overcome um, AC Milan from being four one down in the you know in the first leg. And like, but now they, they, their their fortunes have fallen. Like and I didn't realize how much I actually. Yeah, didn't third division now in the Spain, third like, tier of the Spanish league. I hadn't realized they'd gone that far down the down the picking order. You're right about the bond over sports. You're right that every single person. You know, they're listening now, right now that is a sports fan they love a bond with somebody over sport and it's beautiful really it's a beautiful thing and uh, there's so much cynicism in life and uh, the identity everybody has in, and their own opinions and their own shape uh, and their own interests it's it's it, it is a like very, think of, much a unifying factor in life. Like my like the one that just comes to me straight away is I remember being and it like do you remember the do you remember the idea of when you were like seven eight nine in around that age I suppose most of us when like one of the first times your dad brought you to the pub so. For, like my, my my memory there has been on dad's shoulders in a pub but first of all getting going to a pub with him like and that kind of thing feeling almost like you're an adult but then being on his shoulders when Packy saved the penalty like you know they're the sort of things that you never ever forget ever I loved going to the pub as a kid because the pub had Sky Sports I could watch the matches and that was every two weeks like you know you get the to coke and pub crisps what? yeah <laughs> so, uh, and, like, pool play, table everyone can place dates I suppose in their life and significant memories of people who are gone like on, on dates like you know my mum's gone and I remember we went to London uh, to you know to visit her sister and visit a few of her old haunts and she was, she was gone shortly afterwards and I can place the date it was September the 28th 2003 because Kevin Lisby scored a hat-trick for Charlton Athletic against Liverpool and we watched it that day <laughs> yeah in the pub in Mosa Hill like you know that's you can remember, it. remember yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it my, yeah. my, my dad's well gone and Claire and the hurling we both followed Claire and because uh, he was from Claire and like the 3rd of September 1995 was when Claire won the All-Ireland first time in 81 years we were both there you know so it's yeah the, these things are, are there in everybody's memories um, I, he says like he, he didn't want to go on the pilgrimage. It was it was an annual p- pilgrimage over. Oh, to they Spain. go to Depor's final home game of the season every year. 
<laughs> this, and he wanted to stop like because his brother was no longer part of it and then like, I suppose by the end of the article you get to the okay. he resolves that he won't stop and that's a, a way to keep the memory alive and keep the good time it's, it's great stuff it's brilliant fair play to Brendan for writing it uh, we all need our great sports writers Brendan is one uh, Vincent Hogan covered his last Munster final last weekend and I think it's been referenced in a couple of papers yeah I think did, did Michael Dignan right re- 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 mentioned something in his uh, his <laughs> column but yeah no it's, just, it's worth a mention like Vincent Hogan's been one of the titans of Irish sports journalism for the last half century and, and beyond obviously like uh, that Paul McGrath book you know belongs in a, belongs on the curriculum to quote a, a colleague of mine who said it today like Jason Byrne mentioned it but yeah he, he covered I think his last Munster hurling final for um for the Irish Independent last Sunday he's been a great sports journalist hasn't he I've covered yeah, a few no. events alongside him and I'm always thinking well, it was one of the top people in yeah. the country and I don't know what he's going to do whether he'll do uh, stuff in the future or do books or that but um, look we wish him well whatever he does uh, like I think there's there's certain journalists out there that you have a comfort around reading them you get a cup of tea and a biscuit and uh, whether it's Vincent Dramatically Clerk and or Dennis Walsh I don't want to leave people out here but we all have our favourites or if it's Henry Winter in the UK or Jonathan Liu or Ken Early or whoever you want to read there's a degree of safety of oh I'm going to go to this place now we're going to get something that nobody else can do and Vincent had this beautiful uh, ability to paint words uh into pictures yeah and without overdoing it as well like you know people can ape that and can uh, and try and go too far yeah, with go the, too far yeah. and then you're kind of oh, here we go this is it's always, with the, that. it's always with the human with him just yeah. as much as the sport itself and across all sports as well like I yeah. mean he's written as many riveting articles about Olympic boxing as he has about soccer or Gaelic or hurling or whatever yeah. so yeah it's uh, good innings well done Vincent and what else we got we got um just the thing was interesting thing about referees uh, I read in the uh, Sunday Independent that they're, they're, they're kind of like a, a desire to have them mic'd up um, David Goff uh, GA's gagging the referees only spreads discord officials should be allowed to explain res- reasons for their decisions rather than have to suffer in silence Dermot Crow writing uh, it needed a media event to allow David Goff to explain his thinking to the wider public uh, just a quote here um, we're mad to have mics and be connected up says one referee we want it open but you know the GA they're slow to change they want to keep us all inside a glass house and not be watching the Sunday game reading papers or on social media they're monitoring social media 24-7 they've got someone there watching it and if a ref voices an opinion on social media they'll be on to him I just have these visions of somebody in a room and all you got to do <laughs> all day job. is to watch social media and what's yeah. being said about the GA it's, it sounds very Soviet it sounds very yeah, or, George Orwellian or follows 12 people all of them GA, uh, just <laughs> GA referees and just waits for them to tweet yeah, like rugby's got a bit more I suppose of a former relationship between players and referees so that you can understand that you can do the ref mic and stuff but for GA it would be quite funny like once again with all the GA the argument's always made in GA well we couldn't have this in club games could we but it would be quite funny and it'd be great to have even just to have that window to open it if you wanted to if you wanted to hear a decision to be made uh, by a referee in an all Ireland final or something like that yeah well I've made the point before that it would certainly put everybody under best behaviour anyway wouldn't it because I mean that communication would have to be a two way thing could we hear what the players are saying to the referee as well now all of a sudden you'll find that uh, people's tone and, and use of language would change very very much um, yeah look I, I think it would be great across sports to be honest with you um, obviously look I'm 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 working away in the League of Ireland where League of Ireland referees are getting an unbelievable amount of uh, abuse and hardship um, at the moment rightly or wrongly depending on how my Friday night has gone <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you some weeks they deserve it I'll tell you other weeks they hey, certainly lads. don't um, but yeah I mean again look I've always made the argument that <sighs> once a referee is willing to communicate with me I mean how how do you get angry at a referee who says whose immediate response in the aftermath of a situation is Shane here's how I saw it and gives you a very quick quick explanation but I may have got it wrong but that's how I saw it how do you argue back against that? Do you know? And and I suppose Dermot Crow is, is trying to make the point here of, well, let's let alone them say that to the manager or let alone them say that to a player. Let's have them be allowed to come out and actually say that in the media. And as he says here, you know, I think we all saw uh, saw the, 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 the finish up to the Limerick and Clare game last weekend. Um, he says Liam Gordon, who refereed that game, Liam Gordon looked to have made the wrong call last Sunday. And even if he did, having the chance to admit it, to say he erred as human, do or that he didn't have a clear view of it 
as was the case, would have taken much of the stem and anger out of the commentary and barstool analysis that followed. I mean, that's undisputable, isn't it? That's, I mean, that's yeah, a brilliant, brilliant the, point. The picture is stark of Liam Gordon being escorted off the pitch. You can tell, you know, this, you can tell that it's a hot game. He's he's been running, you know, a full tilt for the game. He's doing it, doing his best in the match, but and it, to be escorted off the pitch by Gardy. I'm a Clare fan, and uh, I was there, and uh, the free had nothing to do with Clare losing that game. No, and that's and and look, and, 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 and and supporters need to be. Big bit better about that and they need to be to be able to go you know what we didn't take our chances that's it yeah yeah James, James he was doing the live commentary for you guys he had actually just gone to him literally as it was happening and it was really interesting to listen to because you could hear James he you could hear Jamesy the analyst fighting with Jamesy the Clare fan mm. in his own head in terms of how he was going to describe what had happened um, and then I think it's Joe actually sees it himself on screen and says listen Jamesy you don't have to be balanced I've looked at it and it is, it is certainly a free but and, and I know look we've too much to cover we're probably not going to get to it but Jamesy himself actually has a really good piece looking back at the game in today's Sindo where he says exactly what you've just said where he, he says look it, it was a free but there is no way that we can put down the, the how this game played out purely to that free um, and I mean there is a couple of, of interesting pieces looking back at last weekend Michael Dignan has another one um, where Michael is I'll just grab it very quickly Michael Dignan is, is looking at it and he is making the he's he's praising well almost yeah I would say he is understanding praising, understanding very good understanding of Lowen's mindset in terms of not taking Keen Nolan off um, now I find it interesting uh, because would you have the same mindset as a manager if somebody was underperforming uh, uh, but it might be more damaging to take the player off for uh, the greater good uh, I would I would and sometimes to my detriment yeah uh, there's almost um in, certainly in GA terms there's an embarrassment uh, in every sport there's an embarrassment around being taken off in the first half you know and I would certainly have had times where a fella would be having a bad game for me and you'd know after half an hour that you need to get him out there but you probably leave him there for the final 15 minutes and you'd do it at half time just so that it doesn't really tear him to shreds altogether um, now obviously Lowen left him there even longer but the point that Dignan is, is making here is that that's Lowen being stuck stubbornly loyal to somebody I've put you there I'm sticking by you you're my guy you can see this out now the only thing I'd question there JD is I don't think he would have shown the same stubborn loyalty if it was knockout I don't and I think because I, to be honest with you I looked at this game I was standing with, with, with two friends of mine we were in the, the, the Croke Park Hotel before crossing over to, to Croker for the Leinster final and I said when the final whistle went I, I said do you know what that's not a bad result for Clare at all because I often look at, at games in competitions I've been involved in where you, you might have to face a team in a group stage and then could face them further down the line in knockout stage and like to beat Limerick once is savage going there's no way you're going to beat Limerick twice and I know that might mean just strange way of coming but <laughs> I, I would rather if I was uh, Brian Lowen genuinely if I was in Brian Lowen's shoes I think I would rather have had exactly what happened last week a narrow loss where we know we have it in us to beat them we know we don't need to tweak a whole lot to get this right and then potentially catch them in an All-Ireland final where you do get everything right in today you beat them in a Munster final you come up against them again in an All-Ireland final oh jeez well especially after you have to beat them in Rara Robin you know, as well uh, Limerick uh, would have had two defeats on the, on the bands uh, but Claire do you have to come over Dublin and Kilkenny and they, they flopped against Kilkenny last year so it'll be very interesting to see what Clare's reaction will be uh, Eamon Sweeney uh, epic season will end with worthy winners on the hurling and the Sindo uh, quote this this is just interesting the stat I didn't know this the disparity in goals conceded between the champions Limerick and everybody else is startling Clare have led in 11 Tipperary 11 Kilkenny 10 and Galway 9 Limerick have only led in 3 their parsimony even more remarkable given the loss of star defender Sean Finn through injury but Limerick's key men this year have been the colossally underrated quartet of Nicky Quaid, Mike Casey, Dan Morrissey and Barry Nash. TJ Reid has put as many all-stars as Limerick's force and put together. Yet these models of unobtrusive and rigorous excellence are why Limerick had bent and buckled this year but not broken. They might be the county's most influential quartet since the Cranberries. Good line. Good line. We have football to update you on and it's going to be Mayo and Dublin topping their uh, groups and into the quarterfinals directly of the football championship. The way things are going now, Dublin definitely, 322 to 7 points to lead Sligo at Breffney Park. Roscommon 115, Kildare 115 at the moment at O'Connor Park, which would mean Roscommon would be ahead of Kildare. Kerry have really taken it to the situation today. 421 against Lads, 7 points in Port Leash. 
and 521 as I speak <laughs> so that's what 36 point 29 point lead for Kerry against Louth Mayo 111 Cork 19 Cork have just got a goal at the Gaelic Grounds these matches approaching full time in the Charlton Cup Antrim 1 they beat uh, Carlo by 119 to 115 to reach the semi-finals earlier today. Uh, not a lot of golf coverage, folks, in the papers because it's a moving thing. It's in California. We Joe Malloy there just before two o'clock. Mel Brown kill in about an hour's time. It's no real great writing on golf, but there is kind of funny writing, I suppose. Uh, we always need a bit of levity in the Sunday papers about Jack Grealish in the uh, Irish Daily Mail. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I thought we were going to do golf for a sec there, but uh, yeah, uh, like we've all been entertained by Jack this week. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, to fire away on it. Well, just, now just before you do leave golf, there, John. Like, Big I mean, one. Brian Kyo, who you're going to have on the line, does does have a decent piece on Rory, and he does have a decent piece about the background to uh, his time over at the at the event. He says uh, twenty twenty two thousand. Uh, he goes as two thirds of the tickets have gone to corp- the corporate brigade and members in a deal that has netted the club a sizable proportion of the 48 million the event is expected to generate so and as well like in the mail so Riyadh Al Al-Samur- Samurai has written about the golf and he said I think who was it John one, one of the English players had a hole in one on the 15th was it Matthew Fitzpatrick Matthew, yeah Matthew, one Matthew last Patrick. year yeah and he was good at that he didn't even get much of a big cheer yeah. he goes where, where were all the, the people sandwich brigade are there now it looks very peaceful and it's actually beautiful TV um, but it seems to be quite an exclusive event and you wouldn't think that a national open should be that way the uh, open championship the British open certainly isn't yeah so that's uh, I, t- I thought it was interesting the way they came together but yeah like Riyadh Al Samurai was r- was writing about Jack uh, Jack the lad a free spirit in the age of robot footballers and it's something that in the same paper Orla McElroy also wrote about just in the context of the women's national team like for she kind of there's so much cynic- cynicism around sport at the minute it's very easy to get jaded isn't it we can talk about championship structures live golf um, you know Manchester City and all the charges hanging over them and, and we can talk about it till the cows come home and and he he does directly directly focus on a Manchester City footballer, but he just kind of revels in the enjoyment that Grealish brought to the celebrations after the Champions League. More him than me. I'm a United fan. Didn't really enjoy it too much, but um, oh, it was still a, it was still a good piece. All right. I've loved him. I've loved him this week. I have to <laughs> I have to admit. Uh, again, my young fella is almost daily saying, "Dad, is there any more Jack videos?" Um, and we stick Jack. Well, once again, it's just. Well, I'm trying to say, be younger people. They're more following stars than clubs. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I like think, it's, it's, it's a small sample size, but I, I think that is the case. Yeah, I think that is the case. Um, and look, you know, you will get people saying, well, "Hold on." you're looking at videos which are son of, of, of a professional footballer you know clearly very very drunk here is this really the sort of, of, of stuff you want to be uh, you want to be zoning in on but like he's enjoying himself there is place believe it or not John still for people enjoying themselves um, particularly after f- achieving momentous sport and feats um, and the key thing here for me is like you still get that thing in sport of you know we're all one we're all together everybody needs to be treated the same manager comes in and tells the dressing room I'm going to treat every single one of you the same like bull like that's why you don't treat everybody the same everybody is very very different and you treat them as they deserve to be treated based upon their behaviour and based upon their conduct and all of that kind of thing Um, and look it's got a great line here Um, he says uh, a few weeks ago in an interview with my colleague Ian Ladyman he supplied a fab jack this is Grealish supplied a fabulous line that that stuck in my mind everyone is different aren't they look at Erling he is the best professional I have ever seen his mindset is something you won't see again he does everything recovers in the gym 10 hours of treatment a day ice baths diet that's what he is that's what he's like but I swear I couldn't be like that we have a great friendship but he will point at me after a game and say hey you don't go out tonight partying I just tell him to shut up and I go and sit in his ice bath but that's us two different people doing well in our own way now like that's that that's the essence of things yeah, if you're go going your to, there are going to be different people in any group of people that's everywhere you're yeah. not going to get the robots I don't see Grealish's um, behaviour say last week as a cautionary tale I don't see it as reckless I don't see it as dangerous I don't see it as um, uh, you know when you see Gascoigne at times you would have seen him when he was at 
had as high a popularity we think of the, you know oh yeah it was a different level you know, you know so so and there's no way that Jack Grealish should be in the Manchester City team under Pep Guardiola's management unless 350 days of the year he was a role model and a professional I met him once uh, not at a training ground or in an ice bath but in a nightclub so Surprise I don't go to him very often but I did meet Jack Grealish once but he does say like you know you don't have to look too closely at the slimy bits of our favourite games but if you do your eyes can really begin to burn uh, but then Grealish is the free spirit in the age of the AI messaging and robot footballers he isn't the modern day Gaza because for all his talent he's not as good but, but and he's not that loose either at best we can tell he has never set an ostrich free at training yeah. And and give me give me a Grealish who, you know, maybe a little bit wild in terms of, of the partying and all that, but for all the videos that were doing the rounds of the wild party and there was also the video of, of the a child with special needs at, at the Manchester yeah. City training ground when almost all the Manchester City team walked past her and yet Grealish comes over and has a brilliant chat with her and a proper interaction, not a tick the box uh, interaction, proper interaction and that's to me that's the you know there's two sides to Jack and you kind of have to grin and bear the bit that might might drive you crazy as a manager sometimes I have one of those in my dressing room <laughs> who uh, between picking up yellow cards and having to warn him not to when to draw the line when having a point you know and but you need when it. we're training yeah. he's an absolute 100 percenter when he's on the pitch he's an absolute 100 percenter so you know we work the other side of the relationship where he just about stays the right side of the line and I think Speak, that's Jack speaking of players uh, going partying have you ever lost a footballer to uh, Love Island in the close <laughs> season I inquired about signing him at the start of the year actually would you believe right yeah we still didn't have a goalkeeper and I, I, I rang over to see would it be possible to consider loaning him out look I didn't know I'd be back down a keeper again wouldn't I Dublin have topped the group uh, 323 to Sligo's 8 points at Breffney Park uh, Ross Common 115 Kildare 116 Kildare won by a point at O'Connor Park in Group 3 but they're both through uh, Kerry leading Laz 522 to 9 points at O'Moore Park Cork are now in front of Mayo 112 to 111 so are Kerry going to go top now fascinating towards the end of uh Okay, are Mayo going to equalise? Absolutely fascinating to see what's going to happen in that group. So there is a bit of jeopardy finally in that. We've got a text in here from Seamus. Uh, Hi guys, read the state of Gaelic football. No longer a sport that a neutral will go to see. It's turned into a boar fest. What's worse, club teams are now trying to do what county teams are at. The result will be no one going to see the game in a few years. Skills like long kicking and high field team being coached out of the game. A team of rugby league players with a bit of coaching would hold their own against most counties at present. Good show. finishes <laughs> 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 on. So. Thanks, James. Thanks for... Uh, um, your uh, your text there um, I want Roy Keane as Ireland manager says uh, one of our commenters on YouTube uh, boxing because you're a boxing correspondent no, no no boxing really in the papers uh, today nothing really no um, I have a tiny bit on in the Irish Sun on Aaron McKenna who had a great win in, on Friday night in uh, at the York Hall in London I'm going to give him a WBC ranking but it's only a small bit I'm not taking massive credit for or anything like that but what I found interesting was there was no previews on the Jason Quigley fight he's fighting against Edgar Berlanga next week at Madison Square Garden on Saturday night if he Eddie Hearn's next big thing if you know he's being moulded and groomed to fight Canelo Alvarez in a multi-million dollar fight and if Quigley wins he'll upset the apple cart and I suppose one bit of encouragement for Quigley like there's nothing on him in any of the Sunday newspapers I saw although he did do a media event on Friday and there was some stuff in the Saturday papers but just um, he, he wants to go the same way as Andy Lee went back when he uh, so it's 11 years ago or it was in 2012 this week Lee lost his first world title fight and then when he kind of came back he didn't really get much publicity or if any publicity in the Irish newspapers and he had to go win a, a must win fight at um, Madison Square Garden which he did and he won the world title in his next fight so it'd be interesting if Quigley who's training alongside Andy Lee can follow the same path but I just I thought it was interesting but it's a busy weekend like the GA so, you know, we're talking about the new structures. Well, it's very there must be a hundred reports in yeah, there. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's so many match reports yeah. uh, mm-hmm. about yesterday's action. There's actually that, that much GA writing, and most of the writing has been about Stephen Kenny. Uh, but who and, reads uh, match reports? Uh, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> some, some, sometimes, sometimes they're good. 113 to Cork, 111 for Mayo. Uh, Kerry, 523, Laz, nine points. It means Kerry are going to top this group into the quarterfinals directly. That'll be a big blow for Mayo if they lose this to the Gaelic Grands. Just on the Katie Taylor um, fight, how was that fall? What's the fallout of that, as it were? Is, is she going to fight again, do you think? It's all very quiet. There hasn't been anything, there has been no talk with the press. There's been no, no real leaks from the camp. So it's it's back to the draw. You know, we're, we're waiting to really hear from Katie Taylor's camp is so tightly guarded. 
that uh, usually after her fights it goes by the same steps and she hasn't really changed you know in the winning or the losing there's a couple of Instagrams she's shown enjoying herself back visiting her family and friends and then that's it just silence for a few weeks I'm sure we'll hear in a few weeks she's training back and she wants to take on either Cameron again or Amanda Serrano I highly doubt she'll finish at this stage but I wouldn't be shocked at anything really at this stage. Do you think she wants to go back in weight and finish on a high, or do you think she, you know, feels like she wants a, another crack at Cameron? If she wants another crack at Cameron, I'd imagine it'd be at her own designated weight. To go up again at 140 pounds, stepping up to light welterweight is probably a bad move. It didn't pay off. It was a risk, and you know, hats off to her for taking it. But yeah, she'd be better off fighting at her own natural weight of lightweight. Yeah. Okay. So where do we go from here? Are you going to Gibraltar again tomorrow? No, we have to train, unfortunately, John. Our uh, mid-season break, as they call it, even though it's essentially only one weekend without a game, isn't really much of a, a mid-season break. We are going to so. win tomorrow, though, aren't we? We are, we are going to yeah, win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 we will. It's, it's, but the manner is going to have to be comprehensive. We yeah. struggled to put them away, and when Mick McCarthy returned, yeah, we struggled to put there, them away. It was, yeah. the, it, was, it was windier than wind. <laughs> Was it was an air flight, or yeah, was an yeah, aircraft hangar yeah, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I felt I was going to like be taken away in a plane or something. It was that was. A, it was uh, a yeah, we struggled to put them away, and that team's going to be low in confidence. But you'd you'd have to imagine that they'll be determined to do a job out there. But will he will he keep the same team? Will he do that same thing where the team put in such a bad performance that he picks the exact same eleven, almost like you're saying? No, nah, no. Nah, well, for a start, obviously Matt Doherty is out, so he has a, yeah. a selection to make there. Um, I think it's pretty much nailed on that James McLean will start for that hundredth cap. I would think. Um, and and I would expect Adam Ida probably to drop out in favour possibly of, of Obafemi. I mean, this is the game to go with two up top, no doubt. Yeah. Um, so he will go with that that system this time around. Jason Knight, another one you'd expect to come into things. So I think it'll be a bit of a shuffle up and uh, I would sincerely hope an improved performance and a reasonably comprehensive result. Co Ramblers manager Shane Keegan and Kevin Byrne of the Irish one. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jody. Some day paper review. Sean. It was great. And we'll be uh, live to Cork and Shannon after this. Take a break. Off the ball on News Talk. Okay, everyone, the News Talk Summer Tour is back and we're hitting the road. Now, has everyone got their seatbelts on? Yep. Yes. Yep. Oh, yes. Now, I'm broadcasting from Galway, so maybe I'm take the M6. I'm from Cork, so just go down and the what M8. about me? Hold on. I'm in We've Wakefield and Dublin. We've Cork to get to. Stop fighting right now or I'm going to turn this car around. Sorry. 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 The News Talk Summer Tour. Check out newstalk.com forward slash summer tour to see the official roadmap. Are we there yet? Ishka Erin is the new name for Irish water. Our continued focus is to deliver clean, safe and reliable national public drinking water and wastewater services for Ireland. For any questions about public water services or to report an issue in your area, call us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week on 1-800-278-278 or 